Wow, eighty-two percent occupancy rates. That's, no, that's crazy. That's insane. I haven't really that, seen、insane. that. I've seen most people, even pre-pandemic, cap out like all these hotels cap out around like seventy-five percent. So first、screen. off, first off, as a as a recap, the key number we were looking for is. Will the burn go from sixty million loss to less than sixty million loss? Yeah, because the main thing is they're growing really fast, but will they go bankrupt or not? And that's、yep. the main thing we're looking for. Yeah, and so the projection that they came out with was basically that they would hit one hundred forty percent year over year revenue growth and、uh, better than negative fifty million、uh, cash flow、um, uh, burn, basically. So I'm gonna just we can go back to the letter, but let, let's look at the numbers, the key results. So revenue this quarter was 157%.、Uh, percent. So that's a beat on their guidance. So they, they expected 140, and cash flow was negative 41 million. That is、uh, crazy, dude. That is crazy. They were so, so aggressive in reducing yeah, the、so、loss. Yes, Q1 was negative 60 million, and if they kept that up, if they kept that burn rate. Um, consistent, they'd be out of money in two years, less than two years. But they were saying they would do better than fifty million, and they really did do better than fifty million. They did forty-one, only losing forty-one million. So that's a that's a pretty big improvement.、Um, wow.、Uh, so the, yeah, and then oh, sorry, that's the operating cash flow. This is the free cash flow. So that's four negative forty-five million. So it's still still yeah, really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Forty forty-five is is good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, still beat their、uh, projections.、Um, so that's that. Let's look at Q three because you know them cutting down costs. They were saying basically that there's a little bit of a trade off with the revenue projection. Earlier in the beginning of the year, they said that the twenty this entire year's revenue would be a hundred percent to a hundred ten percent revenue growth year over year.、Um, yeah, and so let's they've done a hundred fifty percent, fifty five percent Q one, hundred fifty seven percent. Q two, so they're all on track to destroy those、uh, that guidance. So let's see, let's let's look, let's go towards the guidance section. Q three outlook, okay.、Uh, and third, we anticipate revenue of better than one hundred twenty one, representing okay, okay, yeah. So they've reduced basically their year over year revenue growth for the next quarter, seventy eight percent year over year growth instead of your crazy like one hundred forty percent stuff.、Um, yeah. So they're they're bringing that revenue growth down. Um, yeah. Why is that? Or I mean, they didn't. They didn't guide towards. So this, this is the first time they're guiding for Q3. This is probably due to anticipated. Let me blow this up. Continued growth in bookable nights and live units, offset by a lower rev par, which raises headwinds from foreign exchange, and the impact of onboarding of our largest ever building in the quarter. The four one unit building located in Dubai is expected to experience a typical short term ramping effect associated with onboarding all new properties. As well as the seasonality impacts associated with the summer season in the region. Additionally, while we don't spend much in performance marketing, we reduce our spend by approximately seventy percent month over month in June, as we focus on the cash flow positive plan. And given the la- time lag between performance marketing spend and revenue impact, we expect the Q two reduction in spend to have a modest negative impact on Q three ref bar. However, we ramp spend back up to historical levels in July, which we expect to provide a modest.、Uh, Ref par uplift in the fourth quarter relative to the third quarter. We continue to expect to grow full year revenue by between one hundred to one ten percent. So they're keeping your, your their end of year revenue forecast,、um, yeah, as compared to full year twenty twenty one. Additionally, we expect free cash flow in Q three of approximately forty five forty five million before one time restructuring costs, and we are reaffirming free cash flow guidance in the second half of the year of better than seventy million. Before one-time restructuring costs for Q3 and Q4 combined. Okay. Well, I mean, the, then we could just do math right there. <laughs> that if it's better than that, that means it's like less than forty-five million because forty-five. Oh no 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 not, no not forty-five million. Sorry, I,、yeah. I I can't do math. Twenty-five <laughs> million. Yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. So that means so, in Q4 their cash yeah their free cash flow. Twenty twenty-five or、no. better in Q4. Twenty-five or、yeah. better in Q4, which is、yeah. which is insane. Yeah, that means they're very, like well on their way to you know becoming cash flow positive, right? If like they if they had that in Q four, uh, I would severely discount 
the risk of them going bankrupt. Yeah, like, I, I totally. would almost feel like that's a, a unreasonable, you know, thought or way of thinking. Yeah, yeah. It, so it, they went. They're like really undervalued. If, uh, if people think that they're going bankrupt, but they're obviously not, then yeah. that, you know. Yeah. Here we go. So, cash flow positive plan. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Dude, yeah, they're they were hit they're executing. They're executing. Yeah. Oh, this free cash flow margin. Okay. Um, but yeah, they were they were doing sixty mil. Um they were losing sixty mil. They went down to forty five. Then they're saying in Q three it's gonna go to what? What did they say again? Uh, it's going down to 45. Okay. Oh, okay. It's basically going to be, be flat with um, this quarter's, But then the, the next quarter, assuming that it'll be 70 mil cumulative, that's going to be a 25 mil uh, burn. Okay. And then you can imagine if they continue down that route of something along like 25 again, and then another jump of like 10, to 10 or 5. It's very possible. Like, like they kind of were guiding that they in 2023 next year they'd be cash flow positive um so yeah like you said very uh, much more reduced risk of bankruptcy so this is uh this is this is really exciting that's good to see um they haven't missed on their earnings yet yeah how's the stock doing okay a little a little bump up a little 10 percent run up after hours or so seven percent run up after hours yeah yeah, I think yeah. I think that's really exciting. Um, basically, basically, this was a surprise to the upside. This was more than uh, they projected, and more than the markets even realized. And I, I think that um, this is quite typical of very disruptive names. So yeah. people um, people look at it and they're like, "Hey, Sander is a spec." There are true um, scammy specs. Like I, I've never uh, was long with, or like I, I'm not into investing in Nikola, for example. Um, and I think it, it was a total fraud, and I, I thought so from the beginning. But then uh, companies like that, like they basically just um, live off of the hype, but they they had no working truck. It was all just fake, you know. Yeah. And yeah. unfortunately, they threw all the SPACs into the same bucket and just so happened that Sonder, uh, you know, went public through SPAC, but they are not a SPAC. They're actually a real company. So, um, yeah, yeah. And they yeah, got, they and got, I, they I think got that's some because there was a lot of, there were a lot of SPACs with crazy revenue, five-year revenue projections. Um and then Sonder also had a crazy five-year revenue projections, which I think they've you know toned down a bit. But unlike others, they they're still very very aggressive in the revenue growth um, numbers that they're, yeah. that they're showing there. Um, and in well, fact, I well, think yeah. compared to the spec, they're they're going to be profitable sooner than what their spec projections even said. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's very yeah. exciting. Should we? Should uh, we? But but, but growing ahead. growing slower in terms of revenue, right? Growing slower in terms of unit unit signing. So, yeah, growing slow in terms of unit signing, um, new unit signing. Yeah. So actually, let, let's yeah. read. Uh, Fran I think Francis puts a lot of thought into these letters. Um, he's a big like investor. Like uh, he he you know he's read all of Bezos's, and I remember him saying that as as he was preparing to go public, that he read all of Bezos's yeah. shareholder letters and stuff like that. So I think he puts oh, a lot yeah, of yeah, thought yeah. into yeah. this. Yeah, he, um, he he does. He definitely does. Like. He he like really really is into the the day one and actually Jeff Bezos is a investor in Sonder, like oh, he's one of the investors in Sonder. Oh, yeah cool. yeah yeah. So so um I think he just shared like the the memo to him and I I, I think he just uh I don't know if it was just for money like I think he just wanted like he really looks up to what Bezos did with um, Amazon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he just really loved the the validation, and that yeah. 
um, Bezos is following his company and stuff. And I, I think that's why he valued it so much, you know, that, that he invested in Sonder. That's cool. Um, that's and awesome. that, that, you know, if it, if it was like a actual SPAC, like just the throwaway stock, like Bezos wouldn't just invest in Sonder, but uh, Bezos knew that this is a disruptive name. And a lot of the patterns were similar to how um, Amazon started to disrupt uh, yeah. everything about online shopping. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard some of their brand themselves are kind of like the Amazon of like, you know, hospitality, just basically like cutting, like becoming an operational like beast uh, to, beast. to reduce yeah. cost uh, for, you know, operating, uh, operating hotels, which your typical hotel yeah. does not have the incentive to do because they do a um, franchise model. And so they don't have as much incentive to reduce operation costs from, from the company level. Um, but Sonder, because they're uh, more, I guess, vertically integrated um, in that way, they, they do have that incentive. But anyways, let's, let's, let's dive into, let's, yeah. let's hear from the man, the mystery himself. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the dark horse himself. The dark but, but horse. But yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> okay. um, and... Yeah. Should we, should we read this? Sure. Okay. A note from Francis. Fellow Saunders shareholders. Guests from around the world are currently enjoying their Saunders for summertime off, extended trips, and increasingly for business travel. 400 companies have signed up for our corporate pro program, up from 250 last quarter. Wow. That's almost 100% growth. Our focus on driving demand has paid off in Q2 with improved technology and revenue management, distinctive design and merchandising, as well as seamless guest experience. Driving record rev cars, one hundred sixty-seven dollars, an occupancy of a hundred of eighty-two percent. Wow, eighty-two percent occupancy rates. That's, no, that's crazy. That's insane. I haven't really that, seen insane. that. I've seen most people, even pre-pandemic, cap out like all these hotels cap out around like seventy-five percent. That's kind of been yeah, yeah, the upper bar. But that's and, great. And uh, average average Airbnb is like around fifty, I think. Yeah, that yeah, that makes sense. But, um but but they're they're like definitely doing something different. Um so I I can I can talk about this cuz they um when I was working there cuz they they have mentioned the software but you know, they have the ability to optimize um rooms. So uh Actually, yeah, like, I guess that's yeah. That's, I think that's all I think I can I'll say yeah. They, yeah, I think they shared software that. Software wise, yeah, yeah, they've shared that. I think that's public information in terms of uh, like they they put it in their spec presentation of the different kinds of software that they use, and and one of them is for room assignments and and just optimizing that so that you could you know uh, increase occupancy and what and whatnot. Um, yeah, yeah. So 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 yeah. If if they, you know since they've shared that, like basically. Uh, Conceptually, what that means is you can have way more occupancy than a hotel. Like a, like a hotel, a person has to say, um, basically says, oh, I think this room is available. That, that's why you might go to a hotel and they're like, oh, there's no rooms available, so we're going to bump you up to the suite. Like that happens all the time, right? Because a person on the ground is the one doing it. Mm -hmm. But then the difference is with software, um, what you do is you uh, the software reshuffles people like constantly. They're always like before you're in room 100, and then after 123, 150, one you know 900, and like whatever, and it just keeps shuffling over and over and over until the very moment you step foot, and then you know like which unit you're in. But during that whole time, you kept moving around in the calendar so that the person who wanted to stay for one month, it just pushed everybody out like it just reshuffled all the bookings to make room for the person to stay for one month in that particular unit yeah yeah that but, makes sense but then yeah. uh you could you could only do that with software there's no way that a a person can do that kind of algorithm in real time constantly 24 24 hours a day yeah but yeah. the hotels are still in that world like they still have someone in the lobby saying i think we have a room here for you yeah so it it's actually very inefficient because they have to turn away a lot of people. Like someone wants to stay for a month and because some random person like was right there mm -hmm. for that unit, it's not available for a month. 
That's actually you know? like that's pretty surprising to me. Or like it's a it's surprising to me that hotels don't have software that kind of does that. I don't know. Like maybe. Yeah, that's well, that's well. It's 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 like uh, well, I at least at least you know. Uh, yeah, they, I mean, we definitely I, looked at all the software out there, and we, we yeah. couldn't find anything that did that. Yeah. Um, but but on top of that, I think the reason is that um, hotels are also building specific, right? Yeah. So so if you think you want to go to San Diego, for example, and um, you just want to stay like somewhere in San Diego, but you don't really care, uh, you just want a one bedroom in San Diego, like yep. it could be anywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then uh, are you really going to reject your whole trip because it wasn't that exact one bedroom in that exact building? Mm-hmm. So you probably wouldn't, right? Yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. like, oh, I don't care which one. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, as long as downtown, downtown, right? yeah. So, so, so a normal franchise model, because it was before computers, um, even if you have the software, you're only staying at that one building or the other building or whatever because each one is its own franchise, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's 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 not the same owner. So, but if you are Sonder, um, because you're not doing the franchise model, mm-hmm. you can shuffle the calendars across buildings, across the city, across everything. Oh, so, so there is not going to be any software for this. There's no demand from the hotel side. I see. Okay, so so you're, you're, model yeah, you're talking now more about like feature potential of because Sonder doesn't do that right now, right? Like they yeah. don't like shuffle yeah, yeah, to another it, hotel or like another property. Yeah, yeah, they 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 don't, but uh. They have the capability. Um, at least, at least from what I know, uh, it is it is a uh, two years old, my knowledge. Two years old. But um, yeah, like I I only worked there, you know, a long time ago. Uh huh. So I I don't really know if if that team continued to work on shuffling technology. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They can they can current like you know they might have made the features to go across city. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. I, I haven't seen that uh, because the, it, the, yeah. Or I, I, I'm just. I guess I'm saying like I don't think they've advertised that at least. So I, I just I'm assuming that that feature doesn't exist. But yeah, that, it makes sense that they could they could develop yeah. that, and that's a unique advantage that Sonder has because they they kind of have the bird's eye view of all the properties in a city, and so if you're flexible with like moving between property to property, you know, uh, and let's say they give you a discounted rate if you if you say you're open to that, they can really really like pack these, um, you know, Im- Im- optimize their occupancy rates by doing that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um. Okay. So that that's that. Yeah. So that's super uh, exciting. That that kind of be. I I've not, I haven't seen that in the industry at least off the top of my head that I can remember, um, with Marriott or Hilton or any of these other names, um. So let's talk about, let's go to the next, next paragraph. He says, in Q2, Sonder achieved significant improvements in our cash contribution margins. While urban travel demand is still on average lower than, lower than it was in 2019 with headroom for continued recovery, we've shown now for four quarters in a row that Sonder's unit economics are strong and improving. In Q2 last year, still impacted heavily by the pandemic, our negative cash contribution margin greatly impacted our free cash flow unit performance. But as a result of RevPAR's improving from 100, 100 to 167 in Q2 2022, we generated much improved positive cash contribution margins, which in turn improved free cash flow. Strong unit economics are at the heart of our cash flow positive plan just announced in June. And Q2 results reaffirm our conviction in the strength of Saunders fundamentals. Free cash flow improved by 17 million versus the prior quarter before cash restructuring costs of 2 million. This is while revenue grew at the incredibly rapid clip of 51% versus Q1 and 157% versus the previous year. We remain incredibly focused on delivering on our cash flow positive plan where we expect to reach positive quarterly free cash flow within 2023 without additional fundraising while also preserving a robust cash, cash cushion. We remain confident that successfully executing this plan will drive sustainable long-term value for all our stakeholders. Thank you for your continued support, Franz Davidson. Okay, so basically he, he just kind of like, you know, highlighted and emphasized what, what we've been talking about. Um, they, they're on track to, to yeah, to um, become cash flow positive in, next year. Yeah. 
I, I'm surprised, like, the, the tone of this is so, so different from Q1. Uh, like, he, he, he's talked so much about um, cash flow positivity. It's like, you can tell that it's front, front of mind for him. Yeah, yeah. Look oh, wow. There's a little see transformation. Before and after? Yeah, before. before. I, I, I can objectively say that is ugly. Like, that objectively <laughs> looks like an ugly hotel room. Uh, unfortunately, typical ho hotel room. Yeah. So right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're they're basically yeah. They're, I mean, the two two value props. One one core value prop of Sonder is upgrading the design, uh, and then you know reducing operation cost costs. It's funny. I think my friend might be staying at this um, Sonder like literally like today or tomorrow. <laughs> Wait, wait, did you did you tell him about it? No, I mean he knows that like you know I've been into Sonder and whatnot, but he organically yeah. chose Sonder like uh, with his wife, and he was saying like, oh, I'm staying at this. Really? Yeah, he was saying I'm staying at the Sonder, and I asked him like, oh, how did you decide on that? How did you do, how did you choose? And it's exactly like you know their value prop. He said, he said exactly. These are exact. I think like exactly his words. He was like, it was cheaper and looked nicer. You know. And so, like those two value <laughs> props of like you know cost efficiency Dude, that, and a better design. That, that's that's exactly um, disruption. Yeah, right there. Yeah, you know. And he was saying yeah. one thing. He was that, that trend. Yeah, and I was I was kind of surprised too because I was like, oh, what about Airbnb? He's like, oh yeah, Airbnb. It looks cheap on the front, but when you like go to like the checkout or like shopping cart or whatever, it's like they have all yeah. these fees there, like the cleaning fees and all that stuff that adds up. And so the Sondra ends up being cheaper yeah. and, and it looks nicer than, the, than even the Airbnb. Um, so yeah. yeah, that's how we chose. So there you go. Yeah. A real life yeah. story. <laughs> yeah. A, a real life fan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's, it's reflected in the numbers, you know, yeah. like, uh, it, I, I think that a lot of the Sondra's technology is not appreciated. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you do the non-tech route, right. Yeah. But like, uh, Say say you were to take over that La Lagunitas um, hotel or whatever it is, yeah. right? Then um, if you are operating that hotel, um, are you gonna get award winning designers that were like in all of these um, magazines? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like are you are you gonna say award winning designer? Please design our rooms and our hotel for us. Uh, you probably are not gonna do that because that's gonna that's gonna eat into your cost like crazy. Yeah. So you're just gonna get whatever that the franchise or whoever tells you is the thing for hotels, yeah. which is a standard bed and a really ugly carpet. And like, that's it. Right. Yep. And, and you won't know any better because it's limited to the designability of the hotel owner, which is not their core competency, mm -hmm. but you're a single hotel owner. So what incentive do you have to make it look nice yeah. and you're franchised? Right. Mm -hmm. So, so, but then like what Sonder does though is, it, it has to be through technology. Yeah. Like there's no other way that it can be um, designed to that level. Like this is not even that, that big of a hotel, mm -hmm. right? So if, if it was a hotel that was like uh, 800 units or whatever, 400 units, which is possible in, in Saunders um, repertoire, right? Mm -hmm. Then that's one thing. But if it's only like less than a hundred units like this, mm -hmm. there's no way they can make it nice. Or like it, it's usually not economic, uh, economically feasible to you know make it nice yeah. because if you're the uh, hotel owner like are you going to do a world-class designer to design your thing if it's just that's your only building you know yeah, yeah. but but then Sonder is able to do that because they are digitally designing it without the designer ever stepping foot in the room mm -hmm. they can measure everything through software and then the ai in their app will get all the room dimensions and then they can digitally place all the furniture from the warehouse and digitally arrange everything before like it's even ready. Like, like the, the designer doesn't even step foot in the thing. So they're able to design at a much higher scale than, a, you know, and that, that makes it cheap enough to actually refresh the design. While if you are the sole operator, you would not be able to have a good looking design. So it, it's all hinges on the technology. Yeah, there's like so you're basically saying like the the process of opening up their hotel and designing and all that stuff. There's all these steps that are you know behind the scenes, but within each of those steps, there's opportunities for technology to improve or disrupt the process. Um, you know, and and 
ultimately cut down on operation costs and uh, opening costs and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're basically and, like, but, a, but people, yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that's why they were saying that they're an operating system of hospitality. Yeah. I, I think people don't really grasp that part where it's, uh, they're just like, well, this doesn't look like a tech company to me, Yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And, but it's like, Hey, if the costs are lower and the design is better, that that's a tech company. They're, they're not just, they're not just doing like whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and we, we talk about this at, at Volt all the time too, is like, there's one way that it's tied to the person. Like there's an improvement and you just think like, Oh, okay. That's just something that I know. Right. Yeah. That's totally different from something tied to the company where we have software, we have something where it's almost impossible not to do the right thing mm-hmm. because it's baked into the software. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's what uh, Sondra has done is that they have wrapped a software wrapper around best practices of everything mm-hmm. and they just improve the software and that improves everything. So, so if something messed up in the design process, something messed up in the onboarding process, they improve the software and every new person they hire, it's baked in. It'll just get better and better and better. Yeah. Um, That's, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like like some of the first Saunders I was at were like horrible. Yeah, yeah. And then you just see like one year after the next, it, it just could, keeps getting better and better and better. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, it's very typical of a disruptive company. Yeah, it's that, that happens. Yeah, and, and it's cool. And it's like that's hard for like a big box name like you know, Marriott or Hilton to, to do because they're used to kind of like, you know, standardization, like, Oh, okay. Every room basically has, you can choose a one of three beds, you know, like one of three carpets, you know? Um, but then Sonder, each property has kind of like a unique vibe, you know? And so they're, they're kind of making a boutique for that property, but still at the same time, they're basically like trying to scale, like, uniqueness or like a boutique kind of yeah yeah scaling boutique yes or something i don't know boutiqueness is that a word but exactly exactly but it's it's impossible to do without technology and i i think that that's what people need to see is that like when you just look at a unit you're like oh i've i think i've seen that in a magazine before you know like like people are like following sounder just for the pictures yeah. On Instagram and stuff like yeah, that, yeah, just yeah. for the picture. It's fun, yeah. Ooh, and they're like, oh, that, that looks like a designer like idea. Yeah. You know, it's like, like, oh, that's cool, like the accents and stuff. But they don't realize it's like all the units are like that. Yeah. They've scaled design, which is impossible. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's normally very, very impossible. Like, like it's hard to do that. Um, it, it, it's kind of like with like um, Tesla, for example. Um, it's people are like kind of they're like oh they've done that before there has been an electric car that has been that fast before like or whatever like it's some like custom three million dollar car yeah and they're like oh well i mean that's not a big deal but they don't realize it's like well it's extremely impressive if you can scale it out yeah yeah it wasn't like hand bent hand made like every single thing Mm -hmm. but if you can scale it out that's an incredibly difficult problem to solve to scale out that kind of quality yeah and that kind of those kind of results. Yeah. So so they've like somehow figured out how to scale it. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's yeah. I guess that's the key. Um, it's, yeah. It's it's kind of a. It sounds a little bit boring at first. Just like oh, like they're increasing hotels, but it's it is. There's a lot of tech underneath it. Just in the same way that Amazon, there's a lot of tech underneath getting them. You know, they were the first ones to do like same day shipping or two day shipping. There's a lot of tech involved in that, you know, in operating the operation side of it. It's cool that Sondra is doing that in the hotel, yeah. um, hotel accommodation space. Um, yeah, and it it'll it'll be tough for the incumbents to change too. Yeah, because yeah. if if you were doing like franchise this whole time, uh, are you gonna just suddenly be like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do everything now. We're mm-hmm. gonna operate now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it'll be tough for hotels to be like uh, pivoting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then and then saying, okay, we're gonna design our own units now. Yeah. Instead of giving uh, uh, franchisees, like they basically say, okay, which one of these beds from our catalog do you want, and what carpet color do you want, beige or 
beige. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what wall color? Beige or beige? Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> because they they know that the hotel people like don't have a design sense. Yeah. So they force them into like a neutral thing where you can't go wrong. Yeah. So they they don't pick like bright neon green. Yeah. You know. Uh huh. But but th- that's that makes it like any hotel you go to is you just feel like it's the same. It could have been the same in any city. Mm-hmm. But but Sandra has like units where there were murals drawn on the wall. Mm-hmm. specifically from an artist like it was hand drawn per unit oh wow there were like oh yeah that's uh, the wall. in the but um, from local work. artists yeah Hide yeah, or yeah. Whatever. That, that that's amazing like yeah so so the it's it's a win win because the local artists get their name out there yeah but at the same time it's like would you ever see this with a normal hotel yeah you know they 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 want to be unique in the aspects that make it unique right mm-hmm. so if it's if it's something about the city, like you want it to be unique, right? Because that's part of your experience of the trip. Yeah. But if it's something else, like, do you want it to be consistently clean, or do you want like socks on the ground? Yeah. You know, do you want it to like the towels to be consistently white, or do you want it like orange sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> so if if like those things, you want to be consistent. So in order to do that, you have to own the operation and be vertically integrated, like top to bottom yeah so they are vertically integrated they want to be consistent in the things that are consistent that's how they can beat airbnb and consistency but at the same time they figured out not to lose the soul of the unit by uh scaling design basically they're able to shift world-class designers into these cities without uh flying them out there because they they look at the digital representation of the room and they're able to digitally do everything yeah that's cool you know yeah and, and there, there's tech there's tech to do everything there's tech to get the you know room layout there's tech to coordinate the um warehousing yeah you know the sourcing there's tech for like like everything yeah it'd be cool to kind of do a deep dive into it, yeah. like each of those um steps i don't know how much of that is uh you know public information versus private but it'd be cool if we could um if Sandra could like feature some of some of that they they did that in their they like they did a high level overview in this um their spec presentation of yeah. like you know these yeah. different types um, of software um this is what you're talking about the room yeah. attribution algorithm yeah, they, stuff here yeah 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 exactly uh exactly so i mean i can't talk about the exact algorithm yeah yeah but, but that they uh, have, i can say that, that there is it. an algorithm yeah yeah yeah, that's cool. It, it's a it's a real it's a real algorithm, and th- this supply growth. It, oh man, if you can zoom in into underwriting, uh, underwriting. Um, that this is this is super exciting. Like, like the underwriting and uh, supply growth side. Um, I I like to call it um, like 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 basically, if you're an Airbnb host, right? Um you have no visibility into whether you'll be successful or not. Like some people are like extremely profitable and other people they're like, Oh, I'm not making any money. And they close down their Airbnb. So it's just naturally like things just kind of equilibrate. But then for Sonder, they can actually look at the map and they say, these areas will be twice as profitable as compared to these other areas, because people actually want to travel to these areas. But what's, what's crazy is that, the two bedroom apartment is going to be the same all across the city usually. Mm-hmm. So if you're paying like $2,000 a month, it's usually $2,000 a month, like anywhere across the city. Yeah. But to a tourist, one particular area is like really hot compared to another, another area way more than a local, like a local is not visiting that tourist area all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. Like they, they care less. Mm-hmm. So then it, I view it as like a treasure map so they can look at the exact treasure map places and there's like software and like basically software that will point out where it is Mm -hmm. and then they sign all the units there you know and you know that's you know that's that's tech like like there's no way that the human would know uh what areas to target Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah looks like they have some airbnb data that they're feeding in Yeah, <laughs> zooming into the super they, song. They, uh, they, they, they probably should be blurring more of this stuff out, but um, we got it. Yeah, on our site, bullequity.com. <laughs> Sonder, rest of presentation. 
Yeah. I think they got rid of they, this. They, back they on made their it site. public, so they moved. I think they removed this original. They did. I think so I can't, I can't find it on their site, so we might be the only place. Well, to yeah, but it, it was. It's fair. It's fair game. It's fair yeah, game because they uh, they made it public, yeah. and then we got it. But it's. I'm just thinking like. Man, why why are they even releasing some of this stuff? Uh-huh. Um, but now that they've released it, I can talk about it. It's just it's just characteristic of a very disruptive company. Yeah. Where um, to be a vertically integrated company, you basically have to become vertically integrated, mm-hmm. and the existing hotels are not. Yeah. Yeah. So wh- what are they going to do? They're they're in a really hard place. So I I'm curious what's going to happen in the next five ten years yeah. with the beast like Sonder entering the yeah, play. I, yeah, yeah, I hope Sonder gets a cash flow positivity soon and then and then I hope they really just like turn on the, you know, the revenue faucet basically. <laughs> uh, so that they just like soak up all the, you know, the properties that that are out there. Um that'd be that'd be awesome. I, I and yeah. I think that's basically what they're doing is they're kind of slowing down growth in the in, on the front end. Um and then, you know, backloading it more. You know, so once they're like more, once their balance sheet is yeah. a little, in a healthier spot, then they could just you know go go ham. Um, it's crazy just um, buying yeah. properties, or not brought buying but leasing yeah. properties. Yeah, cool man. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, so the the earnings call is actually starting right now, so.